And we're back with some more RimWorld and a quick tutorial today on Psy Levels and Psy Focus. Basically how to max out your wizards up to level 6 and how to max out their Psy Focus. I, I know we're not supposed to call them wizards, but let's face it, they're wizards. Now the first and simplest way to get them to max out is to give them Psylink New Reformers. Feed them 6 of these and you've got a level 6 wizard. However, getting your hands on these is quite tricky. In fact, this is probably the hardest way to level up a wizard because you got to get quests. That's the only way you're going to get your hands on them naturally is doing a bunch of quests and you don't get them that often. They're actually quite rare in comparison to all the other types of quests you'll get and as a reward if you see one come up, unless it's impossible or it's really going to be very dangerous, I would advise you to go for it. No matter what the other rewards are, I would go for this over anything but a resurrect or mech serum, I would probably take this, assuming vanilla and you're playing a vanilla game. Now the next way to get them though is this is probably the simplest and easiest way, and probably one of the most overpowered ways, is natural focus. Every pawn, when they're born, will have some sort of uh, meditation focus type. For example, all of the tribal starts usually have a natural focus type. All of the non-tribals, say this one here, they normally have what's called a, an art focus. They, they can look at art, and art will allow them to charge up their focus. However, this one here is uh, comes equipped with something that messes that all up. They're an aesthetic. And this trait actually changes them so that they have a meditation focus type of minimal. It's just uh, the way it is. So if you have pawns that are tribal, they will be able to worship at this tree. Well, they pray to this tree. And this charges up their side focus bar. But at the same time, while they're worshipping at this tree, it causes this grass here to grow. Down here you can see anima grass 5, progress to next piece 26, 29, 30, 31, etc. It's going up and up and up. Total meditation today, 14 hours, progress multiplier 50%. For the first 12 hours, you get 100% progress multiplier. After the first 12 hours, it drops to 50%. This is just a, the cumulative amount of hours from everyone worshipping at the tree. The thing that makes this really useful, though, is you can put four, five, six, eight people worshipping around this tree and grow the, the grass really fast. However, of course, the more people you put on and the higher the hours get, the progress multiplier goes down and down and eventually it does run out. They're trying to encourage you to only put one or two people around the tree and then two is about the, the, the optimum amount and that will get you the best bang for your buck in terms of return. But if you want to speed it up and focus on it really quickly, you can definitely do that. Now this tree has this radius around it that tells you if you build inside here, it will mess with the side focus generation. That is correct. It will slow down the amount of side focus your pawns gain from uh, praying to the tree. However, this does not affect the amount of grass that is grown. So it doesn't matter how much stuff you build near it, it won't affect the grass growth rate. So we'll come back to that a little bit later. But this does mean that you can worship at the tree, get up the grass. Once there's 20 pieces of grass, someone can link with the tree. And when they link with the tree, they will gain an extra psi level. It's 20 pieces of grass per level, uh, so it's going to take you a while to level this up. It's slow, but it's very steady, reliable, and can be done quite efficiently. As opposed to all the other methods, this is actually probably the simplest way to do it. And assuming you hire only tribals, you can definitely max out your, your wizards pretty quickly. Now, one thing to realize is... These things are not mutually exclusive. These Psylink Neuroformers and gaining levels from the Anima Tree, both of them are the exact same. So you could get one level from the tree, one level from this, one level from the tree, back and forth, mix and match as much as you like. The third method of obtaining this is the Royal Tribute Collectors, and, well, honor in general. You can gain honor with the Empire, so you can gain honor from quests, and once you gain enough honor, this will allow you to gain a rank with the Empire, and the Empire will give you Psy levels. So for, let's say, for example, Chief over here, they have a Psylink level 4. The reason they are level 4 is because they are Praetor with the Empire. So what happened was they gr ground up enough honor to become a Praetor. And once they became Praetor, they had to go through this ceremony. We'll actually go through a ceremony now in a minute. And that allowed them to gain a silent level. However, do be aware. This pawn here is level 4. If I was to, say, worship them at a tree or give them a silent new reformer from over here, that would make them level 5. However, when they gain their next level with the Empire and gain a higher rank, they won't get a silent level with it. They only get a silent level if they don't already have it. So if you have a pawn, max them out at level 6, and then try and uh, go along the Empire path of grinding them up in rank, they will gain no extra Psy levels. The Empire won't give them anything. It's just the way the game works. To buy someone levels or to grind them up, you're going to need X amount of honor. For example, you can look down there and you can see the enabled titles of Green Empire, and Freeholder takes one point of honor. Whatever Freeholder does absolutely nothing, so it's actually kind of pointless. Yeoman does. Yeoman will give you one side level, Acolyte gives you two, Knight gives you three, Praetor gives you four, Baron gives you five, Count gives you six. You need seven points of honor with the, the Empire in total just to get one Psylink level. Uh, you need 21 points to get to Knight. I would consider Knight probably a good breakpoint because Knight gains, gains you access to a bunch of trade benefits. We're not going to go into that, we're going to stick with side focus though. So let's buy 21 points of honor for someone here and get them all leveled up. Now to 
buying it is probably the simplest way to do it. If you've got access to gold, you can usually do that. Now, all you do here is minus 200 is sort of the break point here. This gives you three points of honor. If you're one below it, you get two. If you're one above it, you get nothing extra. It's just 200 is the way it works. Usually buying in multiples of three is your best choice and giving them any extra gold on top of that and hitting accept, no, just, just don't do it. It's actually wasted gold. All right, let's buy someone up to, what was it we said again? We got index here to buy 21 points of honor because why not, or sorry, 31 points of honor. This means they can now become Praetor. Now, the reason we did this is so that we could summon in uh, one of the, the ships so you can see what it's like. Now, to get them up to Praetor level, there's a few things you're going to have to do. To accept this quest, you're going to need to get them a throne room that satisfies their requirements. That could be a little tricky. If you check up here, you can see they're the throne room requirements. It's all listed under the Praetor settings, so you can see that they're going to require a meditation throne room. Uh, the area has to be 40 tiles, room impressiveness 90, all floor, two braziers, four, uh, four columns, a harp. All braziers must be lit. All this must be completed. That's actually quite doable. Then once you have it done, you set it to index. And there we go, index is now assigned to that, and oh, look, lo and behold, we can accept the quest. So we will accept that. Map up here will show you them landing, and here comes the Empire, perfect. So this person here, they're the bestower, and you'll notice the way they've got five Silent Nor reformers on them. Now, there's, there's a reason for this. Uh, the reason for it is because well, Index here has zero levels on them. They have absolutely no Psy focus at all, uh, or no, no Psy levels whatsoever. And because of that, that means that going up from zero to Praetor is going to gain them a whole bunch of levels really quickly. They'll go up one, two, three, yeah, they'll get four Psy Link levels doing this. So what we want to do is maybe show you a little trick you can do later on in the game. First up, the Bestower will go right over here and wait outside Index's throne, waiting for Index to show up. They'll give you a little message down here, or they'll give you a message saying they're waiting for the Bestowing Ceremony to start. It's pretty sit straightforward and easy to do. There you go. Select index and right click the bestower to begin the ceremony. Done, done, done. Do the bestowing ceremony. Now this should take index and we'll crank their side folks up to about level five, I believe, is it? Or level four? And we'll find out in a second. And there we go. Silent level four. Title of Praetor Gained. Now there's a whole bunch of other side effects that come with doing this. I'm not going to go into too much detail. That's a whole other problem. But they're abrasive, which has given them a whole bunch of problems. You really do not want to be doing the sort of uh, bestowing titles on people who are abrasive. Abrasive has uh, some nasty problems that go with it when you combine it with titles. You're better off giving it to people who don't have that trait, or even better, someone who's an ascetic. They don't even have any major needs. For example, you see there, they don't have a throne room and they don't care because they're an ascetic. They, they want prey to a specific apparel, but they don't care because they're an ascetic. Index, on the other hand, they don't have the proper bedroom, so they're getting a minus six. And thankfully, they do actually have the necessary gear, so it's not that bad. They're also going to, because they're in an abrasive, they have another bunch of requirements. But that is how you're going to gain silent levels off the Empire. It's a little bit more complicated and does come with some extra things. Oh, we're not going to go into it, but there, you can choose permits. There's all sorts of other stuff that go with, it goes with it. But all we're interested in right now is the silent levels. And there is another thing you can do to maybe farm these a little bit more aggressively, let's say. Get them into the throne room and then toss in some Molotovs behind them. Now, you don't want to hit them with the Molotovs. You just want to maybe make the room just a little bit toastier than normal. Uh, depending on the size of the room, this can... You can heat up the room faster or slower, but what we're trying to do here is give this person heat stroke. They are actually the weakest armoured of all of them. If you check under here, you'll see that their maximum comfortable temperature is 37.8 degrees. Everyone else is usually wearing some sort of armour or something on those lines, so they're usually a little bit better off. Wow, that's actually pretty terrible for people wearing heavy armour. Never mind. Anyway, well, this will cause a blaze over here. It's driving up the temperature. Let's just skip this forward a little bit, shall we? Oh no! Oh no, that's horrible. The guy's gone down. Well, the great thing about this is they've now dropped all of the Psy Link Neuroformers they were carrying. That means we've got f five free Psy levels. Not only that, the quest, the quest that we have just failed, the one that uh, was the Praetor Ceremony, it doesn't actually make a difference. They'll come back, they'll offer it to us again in about 10, 20 days or something like that, meaning you can do this all over again and you can farm it for lots of Psy Link Neuroformers. This is, of course, maximum cheese. It is completely ridiculous and you shouldn't really be doing it. But I thought I'd mention it, otherwise the comments would be bombarded with it. Another thing you can do for maximum cheese, if you really want to, is you can use these animal pulsers. God, these things are so useful. Animal pulsers will drive all the animals on the map insane, which is actually kind of useful, especially if there's lots of animals around. Uh, namely because we've just paid an awful lot of money to these people, and they're carrying it on them physically. If they were to perhaps, you know, die, that money would be left behind for us to grab. Also, wonderful bonuses. You, it's kind of hilarious to watch animals kill everything on the map. 
Unfortunately, this will damage your e e e relationship with the Empire. It can't be helped. But if you want all your gold back, it is a nice way to do it. And there we go. All of our gold has been returned to us. It's cheesy as well, but so long as you're willing to pay the, the cost with the Empire to get them to like you again, it's kind of worthwhile. Empire-wise, I think we've covered it. You have to grind up honor with them or buy it, and then you have to, well, you have to deal with all of the annoyances of having uh, someone who's got a title. Unless they're an ascetic, an ascetic pretty much cancels out all their title requirements except for the throne room, and they only need the throne room to receive the uh, entitlements. If you've got anyone who's an ascetic, they're probably your best bet for making them into royalty. Anyone who's not an ascetic, they do will have some requirements like finer bedrooms and nicer floors and stuff like that, but it's not the end of the world, it's just annoying. Anyone who's got negative traits like abrasive and stuff like that, that's going to become even more problematic. It will warn you when you try and upgrade them, so you'll find out that way anyway. Now, we're going to cover the tree and the negatives of the tree. Uh, the problem with the tree is you can't build anything near it without affecting its side focus gain. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Based on testing, if we just say unselect thumb here, they should grab their meal and head straight over there to that table. That is the absolute limit of uh, them finding a table. It's 33 tiles. I've tested this recently in some food uh, food tutorial. So if you want your pawns to be able to use the tree and still use a table without getting the 8 without table debuff, you can put the table right on the edge, but you can't wall the table in. So this is going to, any bricks you put inside this area is going to affect the tree's side focus gain, which makes this really annoying. If you want people to gain focus from worshipping at a tree, they're going to end up being too far away to gain uh, the meal bonus or the bonus from being inside a room when they eat their meals and any impressiveness bonuses that go with it. This hurts a lot. However, there is some way around it. That's why we've got this room built here. The way to treat it is to imagine the tree is only being useful for actually gaining psi level, levels. That's it. Do not use it for psi focus gain. There's other things you can do, but what you can do is just wall this whole thing in. Make sure you don't put a, a, a roof tile over the center of it, otherwise you'll chop down the tree. But you can wall in the entire area. Make sure it, just build your base around it if you want. You can worship at it, get up your psi link levels. And then for your pawns, the easiest thing to do is get them one level with the empire. For example, Thumb here has one level with the Empire, they are a yeoman. That took them seven points of honor. That's about 467 gold to buy, or a few quests. That means they now have the ability to, well, they get a one silent level from the Empire if they didn't have it already, but at the same time, it changes their meditation focus type. They gain an extra one, dignified. This allows them to regain their focus at a, a throne. So they can hop onto a throne and gain their focus that way. In fact, it gets even better. You can put multiple thrones in one throne room, so it does not they don't actually interfere with each other. You can have 10 people in here if you really want. And then we're going to get them here to sit on their throne. Now, the great thing about this is they gain all of their Psy focus from based on the throne room requirements. So if we go in here and check on the actual throne itself, it'll tell you a whole bunch of stuff about it. You gain f plus 15% is the base value, which is not actually that great, but you get a bonus for the room impressiveness. The more impressive the room is, the greater the bonus, and it goes up to a plus 10%. And if it satisfies the user's requirements, they get an extra plus 8% on top of that. The That's pretty much guaranteed. So long as they're only level one, give them a throne room that meets their requirements. Yeah, you're, you're basically going here, get the, the weakest requirements possible, give it to every pawn so they can gain their side focus, and now they can sit indoors and gain their side focus. Not only that, uh, we've got debug mode on here. You can stick a table in here and you can stick in chairs. This can also be a dining room, which means it still works just fine as a throne room and they get a massive bonus for eating inside here. It just cuts down on travel distance and really eliminates one of the big negatives of being uh, being a nature-focused wizard. You don't have to go off into the middle of nowhere to gain your side focus back. Just get one base level with the Empire. You can sit on your throne and get your side focus that way. You'll just have to have a nice big fancy room. Most players don't have a problem doing that for their pawns. That covers what I think is the most powerful way to play. Play with the natural focus, worship at the tree to get your levels, then get one level with the Empire, or get one level with the Empire somewhere along the way, and that way you can sit indoors to gain your Psy focus, and it basically cuts down on the big weakness of the natural focus gain. Because the, the bonus of these things is it's really easy to level up your pawns and get lots of Psy link levels. The hard part is gaining the, uh, the Psy focus day to day, because they have to travel a long distance to get it. The other option, of course, is to keep you know, using some Molotov heatstroke on this guy and uh, sealing all their Psylinx. Now, do remember, though, that the amount of Psylinx they bring with them is directly proportional to the level of the person's ceremony. So uh, this Praetor ceremony here means they need to bring five. They'll bring four plus one extra. Or just say, for example, Thumb was supposed to get one Psylinx level out of this guy and he summoned him for the ceremony, the guy would bring two on him. He'll always bring one plus one extra. Or what he needs plus one extra. So if someone was supposed to get two, they'll bring three. If someone was supposed to get five, they'll bring six. 
So a good idea would be to level some up really, really high and make sure that the the, the bestower is going to bring lots of Neuralinks and then zap them and grab all their Neuralinks. That way you can level up lots of people very, very quickly. Last thing to cover is the meditation types. There's, oh, there's quite a few, but the main ones that you're going to be uh, concerned with are natural and dignified. They're the, the two main ones, in my opinion. You can get things like morbid, which allows you to gain it back from praying at or focusing or meditating at tombs or graves. Tombs are better, of course. And if the tomb contains someone that's related to the person meditating, well, all the better that will add to it. Though, honestly, these things are so rare and hard to come by, it's not really worth going into the specifics. You can look them up as you go. Uh, the other one is pyromaniacs. Pyromaniacs can uh, worship at, or meditate at these things. And honestly, fire is not that great. And then, of course, we have the minimalist one where if you're an ascetic, like Chief over here, they can worship at walls. This is also pointless. It maxes out at about 22%. It just means they can do it anywhere, which is nice. You're better off getting them the dignified trait. They can at least then worship at its own room and get up to 33% of their side focus back as opposed to 22. The only thing left, I suppose, then is meditation spots. Uh, this is useful for assigning people out to the tree. Or if someone has a meditation focus, say like graves or things like that, you can basically assign it out, say, we'll put that there. And if someone's a pyromaniac, they can we can assign them to that. So they, they do their praying there or their meditation there. It's pretty handy for the tree, but outside of that, I've never really found much use for it. I've kind of gone the throne room route, and it really, really is probably, in my opinion, the best way to go. I completely forgot to mention Anima Stones. Anima Stones give you a base meditation rate of 34%, and if you stack it with four other Anima Stones, you can get a plus 8% bonus on top of that for a 42% uh, side focus gain, which is huge. It's the best of anything, as far as I'm aware. However, to get them, you have to buy them from tribes, or you can steal them by, you know, raiding tribal villages, killing all their stuff, and taking them. However, I would still prefer to use the throne rooms. Reason being, they have the exact same radius where you can't build inside them without affecting them. They're, they're just as annoying as the tree that way. So I would much prefer to be able to stay indoors and stack all the bonuses that come in here, including the beauty ones. And one extra bonus that's not quite obvious with throne rooms as well, once a pawn has sat on a throne for about three to four hours, they get a bonus where it's a plus four for extremely impressive throne room. Assuming you have an extremely impressive throne room. But it does take about three or four, four hours to kick in. Yeah, they're just kicked in there now. And then it lasts for 24 hours. So considering this gives a mood bonus and all of the things that come with it, definitely stick with this. Anyway, before I ramble any further, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Thank you.